And now, ladies and gentlemen, here's Fanny Bryce's Baby Snooks. Well, Daddy, played by Hanley Stafford, has a new toy. For Christmas, his boss gave him a powerful shortwave radio set. And Daddy spends all his spare time fooling with it. Right now, we find him in his study, listening intently to the police calls. Hope this is a good one. Repeat on broadcast number 274. All cars be on the lookout for two men in green sedan wanted in holdup. Clear as a bell. Number one is described as 5 foot 10, clean shaven, wearing dark sweater and dark pants, carrying a blue steel revolver. No description on number two. These same men just held up a pedestrian in the vicinity of Clump and Turnwell, were last seen heading south on market. Hmm. That's only a block away from here. Additional information on number one. This man has a scar on his left cheek and speaks in a very high voice. That is all. Oh, I'd like to get my hands on those ruffians for five minutes. Why, I'd tear them apart. Stick them up. Oh, don't shoot, please. I... <laughs> Did I scare you, Daddy? Snooks, what are you doing out of bed at this time of night? I had to get up. What for? The lamp fell down and got broke. Oh, it did. How did that happen? It happened when I was quietly pushing it off the table with my nose. Now, what kind of insanity is that? Why should you push a lamp off the table with your nose? I was playing Pinocchio. Do you mean to tell me you haven't been sleeping all this time? I was asleep when my nose was awake. Well, I'll wake up something else if you don't go right to bed. I'm afraid to sleep in the dark, Daddy. Oh, nonsense. Am I afraid to sleep in the dark? No. Well? But you got Mummy to look after you. Never mind that. You go back to your room. All right. Daddy! What is it? When I get married, can I sleep with the light on? No. Why? Because, because only owls sleep in the light. Then I'm going to marry an owl. <laughs> All right, marry an owl. What if he lays an egg in my bed? Oh, stop that silly talk and go to sleep. It's after one o'clock in the morning. No, it ain't. It is, too. You think I'd lie to you? Uh-huh. What? Let me see your watch. No. If I tell you it's one o'clock, it's one o'clock. The time is now 9.15 p.m. Who said that, Daddy? Oh, uh, uh, that's on the short wave set. Uh-huh. He means Eastern time. He's broadcasting from New York. JFTR Los Angeles Police. Oh, uh, yes, my watch is a little fast. But it's way past your bedtime, anyhow. Well, why don't you go to bed? I'm listening to the police calls. What's police calls? Police calls are just... Now, wait a minute. Here's one. Car 32, in front of the market at 10th and Main. See the woman. That is all. Are you going to see her, Daddy? (laughs) No, that's for the police. They have to see her. Why? I don't know. Is she pretty? It doesn't make any difference to the police whether she's pretty or not. Don't it? No. Why? Because they have a job to do. The announcer calls for car 32 to carry out an assignment, and they do it, that's all. How do they know about it? They hear it over the shortwave radio, like I do. How did we... How do we hear it, Daddy? Through the radio. What's radio? It's exactly like the telephone, only it's different. Why? Because there are no wires. The police broadcaster's 15 miles away from the radio car, but they can still hear him. Does he holler? Nobody hollers! You do. That's because you make me. Now, look. If you don't interrupt, I'll give you a very simple illustration of the difference between radio and the telephone. To begin with, suppose you had a dog 15 miles long. Huh? Suppose you had a dog 15 miles long. Well, where would we keep him? He's not a real dog. I want a dog, Daddy. Do you want me to explain this or not? Want. All right. Suppose you had a dog 15 miles long. One end of it's in the broadcasting station, and the other end is in the car. Which end? Any end you like. Oh, then let's put it in the rumble seat. All right. One end of the dog is in the rumble seat. Where's the middle? The middle is stretched over 15 miles. Don't it hurt him? I told you this is an imaginary dog. So one end is in the station, the other end's in the car. Now, if you kick him at one end, he barks the other. Comprehend? Copperhead. (laughs) Well, what do I mean? If you kick him in the rumble seat, he barks in the station. Right. That would be the telephone. Well, what's radio? The same thing without the dog. Good night, you're going to bed. Good night, no, I ain't. Now listen, Snooks, I'm warning you. Shh, 
Tower 11A in 22's district. Investigators shooting at the elite ballroom at 4th and Hedge. They're holding a suspect. This man might be the same one who robbed the grocery store earlier this evening. He's also wanted for forgery, possible hit and run, arson, grand larceny, and murder. Is that all? That is all. <laughs> hey, you see the kind of people roaming around, Snooks? Now you get in bed where you'll be safe. All right, Daddy. Car 14, at the rear of 166 North Clump, a prowler. That is all. That's our house, Daddy. Yes, yes, yes. Mm. so it is. Uh, well, maybe you'd like to stay up a little longer, Snooks. No, I want to go to bed, Daddy. Okay. Uh, on the way to your room, have a look if that back door's locked. It ain't on my way to my room. Well, you can stop off in the kitchen and have a drink, can't you? I ain't thirsty. Good night. Well, good night. Kid's scared of her own shadow. <laughs> I wasn't so comfortable, I'd go see for myself. All cars, attention. Two hold-up men in the green sedan have been seen again at North Clump. Well, what are they hanging around here for? A man with a high voice is very dangerous. Shoot on sight. That is all. Hmm. Must be a pretty tough egg if they do that. Stick him up. Oh, don't shoot. I'm a poor man. <laughs> You little devil. I ought to give you a sound flashing. Now go right to bed before I do. Good night. Kid's positively fiendish. Wait till I get hold of her in the morning. I'll... Take him up. Snooks, I warned you. Take him up. Oh, you can't scare me anymore. And if you don't go to bed before I count three, I'll give you a spanking. You hear me, Snooks? This ain't Snooks and reach for the sky. Oh, this is going too far. Oh! <laughs> it's a high voice burglar. Yeah. Uh, don't you, please. Take anything you want. Who's there? Don't squeal. Uh, it's nobody, officer. Officer? Uh, yes, there's a cop upstairs. I had him come in to, uh, to look at the gas meter. <laughs> Are you sure it's a cop? Why, of course. But if you leave, I, I won't turn you in. Who's there, Daddy? A cop, eh? Why, I ought to blow oh, you. Oh, no, please don't. Open in the name of the law. Holy smoke. They're outside. I'm going. After him, Sweeney, through the front. Oh. Daddy, what happened? Huh? Oh, uh, nothing. Terrible burglar came in, but I got rid of him. Did you? Why, certainly. I wasn't going to let that big bruiser frighten me. I took his revolver out of his hand and threw it at him. <laughs> You're wonderful, Daddy. Then I pitched him out through the window. Luckily, the cops were outside and they caught him. <laughs> Good thing I was awake when he came in, wasn't it? Uh-huh. Well... Come out from under the sofa and let's go to bed. Huh? Oh, how did I get under here? <laughs> I know. Oh, mind your own business. Good night. <laughs>